Hello, everyone. Um, we're ready to start our Real Talk in Retail, Master Data Management, the heart of big data and digital transformation. Before we get started, I just wanted to cover a few housekeeping uh, rules that uh, I just want you to be aware of. First of all, you can engage with us throughout this webinar. Um, it'll be 30 minutes uh, of a Q&A format, but you have the ability to ask us questions through the chat feature. Um, we will be monitoring them throughout the, the session, and then hopefully we can get to some of them uh, after we finish our, our Q&A session uh, in recording. Also, just wanted to make sure you knew that the recorded session will be available about 24 to 48 hours, and so you will be getting an alert for that when that's available. And then, of course, there's additional resources um, available for you to download directly from the ON24 platform, and, of course, on our website, which we'll review again at the end as well for you to, to take a look at. With that, I wanted to get started. My name is Remy Butra, I'm Vice President of Industry Marketing at Snowflake Computing, and today I'm very excited to have um, Venkatesh Ramakrishnan, Practice Head of Master Data Management with Wipro Technologies. Um, Venk Venkatesh, may I call you Venki, because I know we've been working together for a little while. Sure. Well, thank you for joining me today. I know your 20, over 20 years experience in data management, data analytics, and really master data management. Maybe you can give us a quick summary of, of kind of your role at Wipro Technologies and what you've kind of focused on. Sure, thanks Amit. Uh, hello everyone, welcome to this uh, uh, presentation today. Uh, my name is Venkatesh, I go by Venki. Uh, as Rumi mentioned, I've been uh, in the industry for a little over 20 years. Uh, I've been working uh, with Wipro for the past uh, 16 plus years now. And uh, during this time, I've been uh, pretty much working across the entire landscape on, on, on data and across different uh, aspects of information governance as well. Uh, for the past 12 plus years, I've been focused around MDM. And uh, today I lead uh, the MDM and data governance practice globally for Wipro. And I'm based out of New Jersey. That's great. Well, thank you again, Venki, for joining me. I think it should be a very exciting session for everyone. Let's get started. Um, you know, the quick agenda here is just, you know, I'll do a quick intro, but really the heart of the, this presentation is in the Q&A session that I'm going to have with Venki, um, where I've prepared some questions, and hopefully he'll be able to give us some insights into his, from his experiences, and then we'll close, um, you know, this session out uh, all within 30 minutes. Um, you know, as we get started, I was doing some research, and, and in the retail industry, there's a huge, there's a buzz. You know, essentially, there's this buzz around the retail scene is changing dramatically. In fact, predictions are that in the next two years, by 2020, there will be more change than what we've seen in the past 50 years. Um, so if you think about it, it's, it's quite... Uh, quite uh, impressive to see the, 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 the types of change that we're seeing. And we're all kind of part of this. You know, I think that's what intrigues me most about retail as an industry. All of us are consumers, and we're sort of contributing to, to this change, and we're part of this change. And so it's, it's a very exciting to be um, around technology and seeing how technology is helping to, to you know, kind of influence that. Um, you know, so this unprecedented levels of, of uh, shopping power that the consumers are, are getting, um, we're going to see dramatic improvement in by, you know, by 2020. Um, another few studies, you know, I was reading a few different uh, recent reports. This is from Harvard Business Review. Um, I came across, and it actually kind of goes through a study around uh, some myths that are out there, but changes that they're seeing. So, for example, we've definitely heard a lot about omni-channel, and, and, but really, has it become truly omni-channel? I think the finding is not yet, but it's happening very quickly. Um, the buyer's journey starts, you know, it may be, you know, overwhelmingly still single-channel, but the buyer is looking through various sources to get to that information. So, product information, customer information can be gathered online, on-premise, you know, so the physical stores um, are just as important as online presence. Online, of course, uh, as retailers, you're able to gather much more information about your consumers. Um, but on the other hand, if you are a retailer and you have a physical store, you're focused on how do we engage that customer more through mobile, 
through other channels and engage with them so that you can gather some of that information about their preferences, um, the way they shop, things like that. Another myth is, you know, the sales channel doesn't matter. And again, in this finding, it basically was that, you know, it actually does. And in fact, um, purchases online tend to, when, when a, uh, they tend to be longer. So when a person buys online, it could be longer in terms of the, uh, the consumer does a little bit more research, but they also tend to buy more. And then the other thing that they found was if that consumer goes to, to the physical store and then goes back and buys online, that the shopping cart is that much bigger. So it, it's kind of interesting where what, what this shows me, all this information, is the role that data is playing is so critical for retailers in how they understand that customer behavior and, and how they can actually influence that customer buyer's journey uh, throughout the process. So with that, I wanted to just kind of, you know, get into this topic of you know, what, what, what we're seeing in the retail industry. And so, you know, Venki, my first question is these current trends and business challenges that, you know, can you highlight a few of those that what we're seeing across the retail industry? Surely. So you had called out some uh, some, some good myths there uh, that, that reinforces the fact that data is still the foundation. Now, on top of that, we also know that the digital disruption uh, is coming in a big way, and 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 retailers need to adopt uh, to to manage this uh, this new change coming from the digital side. Uh, so as we see that uh, it is it is still a foundation, it is still transforming uh, the, the retailers in a very very big way. So today for retailers, uh, the endless aisle has become more of a reality on on a digital shelf, and to support some of these newer aspects, there is still a very clear demand to have some established uh, good quality data uh, which is which is kind of validated from from a 360 degree view standpoint now uh, what that is what that is also meaning is that there is uh, an ever pressing need uh, for a greater demand from a customer experience standpoint uh, customers do expect today that retailers know about them and and they expect that uh, uh, they would be given a personalized service and and things of that nature so with that expectation growing and and with uh, several retailers kind of aligning with some of those uh, expectations with the from the customers it's becoming even more increasingly important for for others to also adopt some of these uh, uh, newer uh, areas to to leverage that now, while the traditional MDM uh, kind of helps some of those aspects, there is also a growing expanded area where uh, where MDM must come along and address the area of uh, enabling customer experience. And it must now be able to leverage the aspects of AI and ML in order for it to identify and leverage uh, the underlying data sources to pick up patterns and to also identify what a customer would ideally prefer. So, um, having said that, the digital initiatives, uh, you know, are are delivering a significant value for the businesses today, and MDM is playing a significant role in enabling the data foundation for these digital initiatives. Well, that's great. Um, so, you know, clearly the role of data, data analytics in retail is more important than ever. In fact, um, another uh, recent study I came across is, is, you know, really shows how 62% of retailers uh, report that using information, including big data and analytics, is creating a competitive advantage for them. So retailers are really taking this business-driven, pragmatic approach to big data and, and figuring out how they can leverage and better serve their customers um, with, with the type of engagement that they're looking for. Um, so, you know, maybe we can start a little bit back uh, in, and you can, we can talk a little bit about master data management. Um, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, maybe you can just remind us of the definition and perhaps how it might have evolved in the, in the past couple of years. Um, if you could share that with us, thank you. Sure, I think it's a, it's a good to take a step back and then understand uh, uh, how MDM was traditionally defined. Uh, so what you see here is more of a, uh, a traditional definition of, of stating how MDM enabled us to bring technology and governance together um, for us to identify a consistent and accurate view of the master data. So the definition in, in itself uh, means that uh, uh, the, the MDM platforms can support managing the master data of, of the enterprise and this could be in the form of customers or products or suppliers 
Uh, it could even extend into finance domains and, and, and manage sort of accounts or even manage uh, the reference data for the enterprise as well. So these have been uh, more, of, more of what has been uh, coming along over these years. And, uh, and that MDM comes together and uh, enables us to, is to provide uh, good quality data in a consistent manner. Now, in a typical enterprise, the, the problem of MDM is more or less hidden and is not seen as an MDM problem. Uh, more often or not, it comes to, it, it comes to get highlighted as a, as a data quality problem or where someone comes along and says that, hey, I am not able to find a consistent definition of this particular set, and where would I go about doing this? Or, or this could be a case where somebody is not able to identify the total spend uh, on a particular customer or, or, or the total uh, exposure from a particular vendor. And that's how the problems typically stem from. Uh, and, and this probably kind of helps along and then, and then suggest how we could uh, uh, possibly address that. I think um, on the next slide, we actually have, uh, on this slide, we have a good uh, statistics that says that, uh, uh, you know, 30% of, of uh, the CXOs have admitted that, you know, they are not able to find consistent definition. Now, like I said, uh, this is where uh, the problem gets a little trickier because um, it, doesn't, it doesn't come out as an MDM problem, it comes out more as a data quality problem or as a governance problem. But once it is identified that uh, the need for the enterprise is to get a high quality consistent data set, then that establishes the grounding for us to establish an MDM strategy for the enterprise and then to build on from there and then to achieve uh, the success there. So that's how I would, uh, I would uh, kind of state the evolution of MDM coming into an enterprise. I see. So really, even though it may be first perceived as a data quality problem, often that's the indication that let's take a closer look at how you're really managing that data and where how are you pulling that together. So um, that's the, you would advise companies to take a look at what is their data foundation in that case. Is that correct? Absolutely. So always look for, look for uh, a data quality problem as a starting point. Most often or not, uh, it kind of uh, lends itself as that, and and other other form where you see this coming out is also scenarios where uh, enterprises uh, have a challenge in identifying um, a, a consistent form of definition of a particular data set. Uh, so this could be in the form of somebody not being able to establish and identify a customer, or a customer having different facets across enterprise. Uh, where there could be a view from a billing standpoint, there could be a view from a customer service standpoint, and the enterprise may be missing uh, the larger 360-degree view of the customer. So these are some typical forms in which uh, MDM, uh, 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 the, 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 the need for MDM can be established by an enterprise. Okay, great. So, you know, the retail industry has definitely been talking about, you know, product information management or master data management for customer information, suppliers, product, um, for some years now. What's really different today? I mean, is MDM still relevant? Oh, yeah, absolutely. MDM is indeed very, very relevant. Uh, Adwe Pro, we have been doing MDM for the last, uh, I would say, 13, 14 years now. And we have seen the evolution of MDM come a long way. And, and when we go back and see how MDM has changed and transformed, uh, we see that it has happened in a, in a significant way. So more importantly, if I look at uh, the today's scenario and look to see how MDM has come along, uh, you would see that uh, in the era of big data, uh, there is a very clear need for enterprises to have a good handle or a key in unlocking the potential of big data. Now, how good is it when, when I have got streams of data coming in, but if I'm not able to identify who does this belong to or, or to which uh, product does this belong to? Now, I'm not able to establish good intelligence unless we have that handle into that. And my view is that uh, MDM as a data foundation helps really unlock the potential from, from, from big data sources. Now, another big area uh, which, is, which has caught everybody's attention today is also on data monetization. Uh, a, a typical scenario is for enterprises to look at what data sets they have within an enterprise and how could they monetize that in a way that is consistent with uh, privacy laws or in, in a way that is consistent with, uh, with the regulations. Now, a good starting point uh, for this uh, would be to anonymize the data set, and what better way to anonymize the data set than by using attributes uh, that belong to the particular entity, uh, which can be managed within the MDM application. So these are, these are a couple of newer areas which are coming along where MDM uh, is definitely finding itself a strong foot. 
And and uh, as with any company, when they start out on a digital platform or a strategy, uh, knowing the customers, knowing the products, knowing the suppliers, that's a key thing uh, for them to form the strategy and to implement it successfully. So again, MDM becomes that the strong foundation uh, to support these areas. And um, uh, if you could move to the next slide, yes. So uh, one of the areas where MDM has also uh, redefined itself is in addition to just uh, uh, being the point of uh, system of record in some scenarios, uh, meaning it, it, that being the point of creation, uh, MDM is also now evolving itself into gathering intelligence from different data sources. And, and to establish this, there is a very, very clear need for a strong uh, data warehouse, which has the ability to pull in data from different sources, which has the ability to expand itself uh, in, in, in a rapid manner, and which has the ability to address the needs of the different uh, 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 data individuals within the organization. And by doing all of that, and, and by leveraging the computing power, MDM systems now have the ability to infer information from the large sources of data sets that are coming along, and, and they're able to establish some key parameters or key attributes uh, for the customers. So this has come a long way uh, where traditionally uh, uh, MDM was used to define attribute values, but now we are actually leveraging data warehouses to actually establish uh, or, or identify some of the trends and then and then infer some data set from there and as a result pick that up and then take that back as an attribute for a customer as well. Uh, this is the kind of a strategy that we deployed for one of our customers and it uh, truly uh, was a successful implementation because it gave them a good handle into uh, some some uh, good set of information that they weren't aware of. And with mastering those information, it provides an ability for the largest part of the enterprise to leverage that and then to get uh, a successful handle into, uh, into, 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 into other implementations. So that is another okay. interesting so, aspect. Yeah, so, so, oh, that's, so that's excellent. So what, you know, I guess what I'm hearing is so the role of MDM is more important than ever, and, and together with the a modern data warehouse that's able to really now, today we have this need for data coming at us from all different sources, right? So whether it's our mobile phones to, to social media to all types, types of different sources, um, and there's also different demands on that demand, uh, on that data itself from different uh, different audiences within the retailers uh, trying to understand and get more insights into what does this data mean? Um, how can we predict? Um, and so that's kind of what, what together with the data warehouse, MDM and the data warehouse can really do for the retailer is give them some of these great insights um, at, in real time or near real time uh, value. That's right, Jimmy. That's uh, right. That's a good summary. That's exactly how it is uh, enabling and transforming itself. So maybe you could walk us uh, through kind of how your approach and um, how you get, you know, bridging the, the value chain for the customer. Sure. So at Wipro, uh, we have defined this value chain called as D-I-I-R-E uh, that, that starts with uh, data and then takes it through the different areas of uh, information insights, recommend and execute as, as the different steps. Now, this is a typical typical uh, setup in any enterprise where the ultimate objective is to establish and 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 execute and then gain on on the business goals. Now, as the data moves across these different layers, at Wipro we have realized that MDM becomes a foundational aspect uh, between the data information and insight, and it kind of provides a pivotal uh, part in order to establish value for the data set and truly enabling the uh, enterprises to then leverage that uh, to make the required recommendation and then to execute the strategy and ultimately achieving their uh, business objectives or the goals. So that is the way that we have seen uh, this particular uh, 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 value chain establish itself and, and leverage MDM to its, uh, to its journey. That's great. Um, and, uh, you know, so, in terms of the key trends and, yep, go ahead. No, go ahead. Uh, please ask your question. No, no, I, I wanted you to highlight then for us that, like, so together with this methodology in place, um, what are some of the, you know, what really are some of the key MDM trends that, that you're starting to see, and, and especially as you start to work with, uh, you, you've been working with a lot of different customers out there. 
sure definitely uh, we can address that so so mdm itself has been evolving so the the the, the reality now is uh, the reality of multi domain mdm has become uh, a, a true reality now where customers are wanting to leverage the mdm platforms to manage more than one uh, one domain and then master them and then to and then to determine uh, dependency or or or, or to establish relationship between the different domains uh we have also seen big data as i mentioned as a, as a strong enabler coming across uh, and then uh, the mdm on the cloud has been a, a more recent trend uh, where companies are able to provide uh, mdm platforms on the cloud enabling a lot more scalability and performance uh, than, than what was available in the past uh the iot is making a significant uh, engagement on the mdm side we have seen some really interesting use cases where customers are wanting to mix up cloud and iot together and then solve some complex problems using the mdm uh, uh, tool sets and uh, for customers who are engaged uh, in identifying 360 degree view uh, the social influence management is another key aspect where mdm plays a key role uh, in order for, for for enterprises to manage those handles and and, and manage those sentiments uh, from an mdm standpoint and and very clearly uh, mdm and data governance have come together to deliver true success and an essential part of data governance is also the business process management capabilities uh, which have come strongly from from the mdm tools so these are some of the more recent trends that we are seeing in the market uh, and how customers are leveraging them uh, for a greater success on their enterprises that's great so can you share some use cases i know you've touched on uh, different uh, you know i guess some of the benefits but maybe a particular use case that stands out um, in terms of uh, customers and the value that they've achieved sure uh, so uh, today when we look at this uh, uh, the 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 benefits that customers are looking for are definitely uh, vast and wide so uh to start with i think uh, from a product standpoint uh, it enables us to reduce the overall cycle time for new product introductions uh, for one of the uh, one of the uh, customers we were able to drastically shrink this down uh, by by a huge factor of almost about 60% and establish that it can get accelerated through automated governance processes and uh, and uh, the other challenges that typically enterprises are stuck with are about uh, Uh, uh you know managing their inventory on the product side managing the suppliers managing the supplier risk uh, customer centricity these are some of the typical challenges that uh, that that have been there and and today these are even more important uh, in, in in the current scenarios and uh, and the retailers are definitely going beyond uh, to address some of these issues that are out there now to walk to an example uh, you know this was a case of a high end retailer uh, who's providing uh, Uh, personalized view of of, of their customers uh, this customer um, uh, was having challenges uh, if you could possibly go to the next slide i could uh, oh sorry there it is uh, so this particular customer uh, uh, was one of the largest uh, you know home furnishing and corner cookware customer of ours and they were having a challenge with uh, with getting a good handle into their customer uh, customer data sets uh, they had a strong digital presence and then uh, uh, but they were not able to get good handle into the data set because their their systems were were running on on uh, data technologies and that did not enable them with uh, a strong a strong 360 degree view of the customer and uh, and uh, what we help them out is to kind of uh, define uh, a solution that was aligned towards this uh, we help them with householding we help them with identifying uh, customer preferences we help them with managing their uh, uh, their, their their customer address movements and as a result uh, we were able to kind of give them a strong uh, inter a strong uh, uh, indium which was kind of aligned more with uh, more with their uh, digital requirements and then aligning with uh, what a modern mdm solution would provide so uh, what we also did was to build out an ecosystem around this so that we were able to get different uh, data sets from different sources coming in together feeding into this and then the system providing a 360 degree view and and providing some significant uh, uh, savings for the customer now the 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 uh, key highlight of this was in addition to uh, doing a lot of cost savings it also helped them avoid a lot of cost because they were spending a lot around uh, print of their uh, uh, you know uh, uh, their their monthly uh, 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 sorry anything the name of uh, 
the catalog. So, so, uh, the, the catalog was a big, big aspect for them. And we helped them streamline that whole catalog managing process and helped them save considerably. So uh, we, we were able to kind of help them save to, save to the extent of about $8 to $10 million uh, by way of removing duplicates, by way of managing their data process in a better way. Uh, we were able to improve our marketing campaigns in a significant way because now uh, we actually had a 360-degree review of the household and we knew exactly who were in the household and what the percentage is there. And we were able to personalize the particular uh, aspects of that and then help them kind of get uh, uh, what, they would, what they would prefer to receive uh, on that mail. It also helped them reduce their overall marketing cost, like I described, and, and, and engage a better customer service. And overall, the customer data quality improved by a significant notch, and that became a key driver for various initiatives within the enterprise. That's great. So it's not just the cost savings, that, uh, which is quite significant, as you mentioned, but also the business impact across different departments um, is tremendous, um, especially with this, this particular retail use case that you've highlighted for us. Um, very exciting to hear this. Um, so as we move on, you know, maybe you can highlight, you know, how does one get started? I mean, you know, it, is, is MDM one of these huge, you know, mega projects that you're on, in for um, many years, or, or is there one way to start uh, that you recommend for retailers? Yes. So uh, starting MDM is, 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 is a challenging part for most organizations, but with our years of experience in doing this, uh, we have developed what we call as an empowered methodology. And, and this methodology looks at MDM uh, more from the angle of technology alone. It looks at across business data, technology, and governance, and across different phases. What this enables is a strong way for customers to look at what they essentially need uh, to start their MDM program, how to kind of sustain that and take it forward. It has a very clear way to establish strategy and a very clear way to operationalize that strategy uh, in the execution as well. And by looking at MDM beyond the technology, we have solved the challenge uh, that most customers face, uh, which is the inability for MDM to become a strong business application. And by looking across these different areas, we are providing a very clear way for customers to introspect. And the good thing about this whole model is that it could actually leverage all the different setups that may be done already in the, in the current system by way of activities, and then only look at the activities that needs to be done. And this way, it enables uh, our customers to have a very quick acceleration uh, when it comes to having a jump start on their MDM programs. That's great. Um, you know, I, I, this is my last question because I, I, it's been great to get all the chat questions, and please do keep them coming. What we'll do is if we can't get to all of them, I just want to let you know that we will answer them um, after this call over email to you as well. Um, but you know, my last question to you, Venki, and, and before we start to wrap up, is how do you anticipate the retail industry kind of transforming? Um, you know, what are some of these big technology impacts that you foresee um, from your experience? Sure. So we saw a number of things along the way, uh, but then what I would like to kind of put together and present is a concept of a, of a customer queue. Now, for any retailer, uh, the key thing would be to identify and know about a customer from all different angles. There are, there are some aspects of this uh, cube edges uh, which could possibly be identified from the existing systems, but a large number of them today are, are white spaces. Uh, and these white spaces will have to be identified from large data sources, uh, like we described, uh, leveraging the big data, leveraging the aspects of AI and ML uh, for us to do a learning on those big data elements, and then, and, then, and then to kind of identify and filter out those specific attributes, which can then become uh, uh, key attributes for the customer. So uh, what we would look for and what I would, uh, uh, what, what we recommend readers is to look at uh, customers from from all these different angles, and then maybe come up with, uh, with what could be a customer contextual score. So now, when I look at this from a customer domain perspective, having this view will help retailers have a very, very clear strategy in terms of how they would want to address their customers. Uh, this could help them drive their marketing strategy. This could help them drive their sales strategy. Uh, this could help them drive their uh, you know, uh, promotion strategy and so forth. So I feel that in future, this is going to be a very clear ask from, from, from retailers, and, and uh, customers are going to demand that uh, the retailers do have the view around them so that they can uh, offer them that tailored uh, uh, experience that they expect to, expect to have. 
Very good. Well, thank you very much. You know, I think you've highlighted uh, quite a bit in this session. I know we've tried to fit a lot in. Um, you know, so just to quickly summarize, I mean, data really is at the heart of digital transformations that we're seeing today. And, and clearly leveraging the customer behavior analytics by having a data analytics and a master data management foundation provides you with this ability. Um, as, as Venki mentioned, you know, the, there's this need to personalize both the in-store experience but also the online experience as well. And then, of course, increasing those conversion rates through predictive analytics, targeted promotions, um, like you mentioned, the high-end retailer who's trying to really personalize that engagement with their each of their customers. Um, and then, of course, the operational analytics and supply chain analysis and, and really driving the customer journey with analytics and a good, solid data foundation um, so you get that understanding of what's, what's, uh, what's really happening uh, across that, that uh, customer value chain that, that we're so eager to kind of understand. Um, with that, I'd like to kind of, uh, you know, kind of let you know that, you know, essentially, you know, I love this Chinese proverb in terms of, uh, you know, the best time to plant a tree was perhaps 20 years ago, but the second best time is now. And with that, I think there's this imperative for retailers to just get started. Um, you know, start small, scale up, start, you know, wherever the biggest needs are. There's no kind of, uh, this is the only approach, you know, there's no, as Venki pointed out, I mean, uh, oftentimes MDM, it, before you even understand that you have an MDM um, uh, challenge, it really starts with data quality. The data quality is not appropriate. So, you know, take a look at those things, address them, and then move forward. Um, and I wanted to make sure that all of you knew that uh, both our websites are on there. Um, uh, you know, please do uh, visit. We have lots of information about uh, capabilities that both Snowflake Computing offers um, for retailers uh, as well as other industries as well as Wipro who works across industries including retail being a big focus for them. Um, you can of course try Snowflake's data warehouse, cloud data warehouse for free. This is just our contact information if, in case you wanted to reach out to us um, post this session. And then um, I just wanted to take a few questions um, that have come in. Venki, you know, we've been getting a lot of great questions uh, through the chat feature. Not sure that we'll be able to cover um, all of them. And, you know, I'll give you a chance to also look at them if there's some that, that really strike you as something that you'd like to uh, quickly answer. Um, but. One question I did have, I did get, uh, and then maybe you can take you can take a look at some of the questions, and we can get to at least two of them. One is around the time to value for implementing kind of a modern MDM solution. Um, what is that? Are we talking years, or, or what, what is that from your experience? Well, that's a good question. Uh, I think traditionally MDM was attached with uh, with longer lead times for implementation, but uh, the technology has been changing considerably. And now, uh, now with, with with all the new technologies and the cloud-based uh, solutions that we have got, uh, the, the reality is that we could definitely bring down the implementation down, and then we could start realizing the benefits starting from anywhere from uh, 20 to 26 weeks, and then and then it kind of continues on to to, to realize some of the other use cases. But yes, considerably the time has shrunk, and I think the customer should expect to see uh, uh, that their their their. Uh, uh, problems to get addressed right from right from that time onwards. Okay, great. Um, you know, there's another question that's come in through the chat feature. I don't know how easy it'll be for you to quickly answer because we we are kind of at the top of the hour right now that we probably should wrap up. Um, but it's it's around kind of how do you determine whether MDM operates in an after the fact clean consolidation of data? versus MDM being in the middle of the customer setup process? It's a great question. And, and, and the way I would look at MDM is, uh, is look at it more like a data pipe, right? So assuming that uh, uh, the pipe is the source of the data and the data flows through that, uh, if, we are, if you are able to uh, establish MDM at the end of the data pipe, uh, typically that means that you are trying to solve this for an analytical problem, then, then you've got what is typically called as a a consolidation architecture. Now, as you move up the pipe, uh, you could start fitting MDM 
up along the pipe right up to the point uh, where, where, where the source is at. And when you, when you see it right at the point where the source is, uh, you are now essentially centralizing the whole process and, and, and establishing a, a process by which the data gets centralized from an induced standpoint. Uh, the, 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 the challenge for the enterprises is as you do the left shift from the, from the end of the pipe towards, uh, towards the uh, uh, actual pipe itself, uh, there, is a, there is a company need to mature the data governance. So as we saw, MDM is not just about technology. It is, it is having an ingrained uh, uh, capability and a requirement around governance. So it is important for enterprises to look at the maturity of the data governance in order to see whether they can uh, can update this across and, and closer to the closer to the uh, place where the data starts originating itself, and uh, also uh, the other the other related one uh, that I could address is the fact that uh, in an enterprise there could be different data domains, and and different data domains could actually use different architectural styles. So one of them could possibly use the consolidation style where where MDM is kind of designed. At the, at the pretty much the end of the pipe, or a coexistence style where MDM kind of comes along right about in the middle of the pipe, or 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 at the origin itself where it is more of a transaction style or a hub and spoke model, and and the, the fact that different uh, domains could use different models provides enterprises the, the, the best form of leveraging MDM, and and it must be identified based on the use case, and and it's important for enterprises to adopt a style that is aligned for that particular domain. Okay, great. Well, thank you very much um, for your time and for joining me today. Um, clearly, from the questions, I think there's a lot of interest, um, and I wanted to let our audience know that those, those questions that we didn't get to today, we are going to respond to you and make sure you get the right answers, and uh, feel free to reach out to us. Um, and Venki, I hope you'll join me in a future session because this has been very exciting to learn about um, how MDM is really evolving and, and really transforming the retailer's landscape. So thank you again for joining me, and thank you to our audience. Uh, with that, we're going to call it a wrap. Thank you.